Hello, today we're going to look at how to use the Excel import uh, to import some files. I've got three files that we're going to import. Um, one came from Arkansas, one came from somewhere on the East Coast, I think New York or somewhere, and this one came from California. So all different, not that the states matter, but the Excel files are all different formats. Um, it's came in, you know, they came from different online timing company or online registration companies or somewhere. Uh, and I was just going to show you how you can import any Excel file. Doesn't matter the format. Um, yeah, you can in import any of them. So first, we're going to do is open up the program, and we're going to pull up a race uh, sample 5K, and we're going to hit the import from Excel button. Now, when you do that, it pops up this. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, file selector here where you actually just pick your Excel file. And what I do is usually if I'm not sure if I've never opened the Excel file and if I don't know if the first row is a column header, I'll uh, I'll hit no. And it looks like that this one does contain, like here's the actual column names. So the first row is a column header. So all I have to do is just click on that link and pick it again. And then this time I hit yes. And so with this file, they've got, for some reason, a bunch of blank entries before the actual values start. And so uh, I've got some instructions here at the top that will kind of tell you what we're going to do. Um, you know, I, I say that you can left-click on the columns, and you get a bunch of options. You have to split the columns, merge, whatever. We're going to use pretty much all these features um, when we're importing these three files so that you can see what they do. Um, so I've got the instructions here at the top. I've also got little tool tips like for every column you can mouse over it and it'll tell you, you know, here's what's expected and here's what'll happen if you don't put anything in or here's little tips about the program. And so you can read those if you want. Uh, like I said, each one, if you push mouse over, kind of gives you a tip. Um, but what we do is we, <coughs> we will uh, drag and drop the columns so that they match the template above. So, um, so obviously what we do is let's say this one's got bib number right here. We just drag it and drop it right there. Now, for me, I like to, after I've got it in the right spot, I like to go ahead and make it the same size just so that I can eyeball everything when I've got them in order to make sure everything looks good. So the next thing we need to do is do the last name. Uh, so there's the last name, first name, and do we have gender? Okay, we've got gender in this one. And type is going to be the division, looks like, runner or walker. Date of birth, they don't have date of birth. So the program, by the way, knows how many columns you're going to need to fill out the template. So if it sees that your Excel file doesn't have enough columns, it adds placeholders. So because we don't have date of birth, we need to use a placeholder. And all that is is just an empty value all the way down. Um, so we do have age. We don't have street address. We do have city. We've got state. Looks like we've got two postal codes or zip codes. Uh, we don't need this one, so we can either just drag it off to the end, or we can actually click on it and just do remove column. Uh, usually, I just drag it off to the end. I don't. I don't really. You know, it just saves a little bit of time. So postal code. We need email address. We've got telephone, and the last thing is t-shirt size. So that's all the uh, the columns in order. And the last thing I do is I make sure that um, all the values in those columns match what my program expects. So I do change column data, and when I drop it down, it'll tell me it'll tell me all the values that are in the old file. So it looks like there's some spaces, which we see in the very top here. There's spaces, and there's F or M, and that matches. If you read up here at the top, for gender we need M or F. So we're good here. We don't have to do anything. Let's look at division. And if you see that for the top, it looks like we need R, W, or H. And that's the only values we need. And this one's got just R or W, so we're good there. And what about T-shirt size? Okay, so this, this actually had all the right v values already, so we're good. Uh, the next file, we'll probably have to change some, and you'll see that feature getting used. Uh, but for this one, we're ready to go. So uh, I like just as a habit to go ahead and sort it by bib number. You don't have to, but because um, it'll get obviously shown sorted by bib number in the program but uh, we're going to go ahead and import this one it will ignore anyone without a first name or last name so you don't have to worry about these spaces um, I'll show you the end result here so now I've got all these participants in there now if you 
imported from Excel and selected the exact same file and tried to import it again, it would only put in new values. So it would see, okay, here's a bib number that matches, you know, bib number and name matches, so don't re-import. So if you change the name uh, just slightly and then import it again, it'll probably put them in twice. Uh, but otherwise, for the most part, you don't have to worry about duplicate entries. Now this next file uh, we're going to test with is that came from California. Uh, the first row, I'm not sure if it's column header, so let me hit no. And let's review the data. Okay, so there is no column header data in there, so that one did not contain a column header. So now let's, uh, as we saw before, reorganize the fields. This race number, we don't need it, so I can just drag it off to the end. Um, or, like I said, I can right click on it, or sorry, I can left click on it, hit remove. And this one, it's got last name, we'll put it over here, first name, it's got gender, it does not have division, it doesn't have date of birth, and it really doesn't have anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, I know the, the program's going to make sure we have enough columns, but I like to go ahead and line it all up, just eyeball it anyways. If for some reason we deleted columns and needed to add another one, just like how we removed, we can also right click, or sorry, left click, and do uh, add column. Uh, in fact, we'll go ahead and do that. And so all that does is add more placeholders so you can fill in gaps. But uh, this file, again, is, is ready to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, oops, let me close that up. Let me sort it again. Um, so by just left clicking on it. And so now, uh, one thing I'll show you too is, let's say that you wanted to uh, do something with the Excel file, but you didn't want to lose the data you had. Um, so if you wanted to save this as Excel, that way you don't have to reformat all the columns and everything, you can just easily uh, right-click on the anywhere in the Excel document and do Export to Excel. And when you do that, you just pick, yeah, I'm going to overwrite this one. That's a dummy file I was playing with. You can just... Uh, export this to Excel anytime and, and re-import it later real easy. So uh, now this does not change the value in your old Excel file. Uh, this just formats it to where you can import it. So we're going to go ahead and import these. So now we have those finishers and we'll pull it up over here so you can see. And there's all those I just imported. Started with a number 9000 something. Now the last one I'm going to import is a, it's got 480 something, something people in it I think. Um, so the first row, is it a column header? I'm not sure. Okay, it, it is. Most of the time it is, but I like to go ahead and double check so I don't leave someone out. Um, so this time I'm going to hit yes. This one's got quite a bit of work to do. This is a really large Excel file. It's got a lot of columns as you see. Uh, so we don't need most of these. Um, but we're going to obviously grab the ones we do need. And uh, and you'll see here the difference with this one is that the first and last name is in the same column. So uh, what do we do about that? Uh, pretty simple. You just left click on it and do split column. And as you see, it's last name, comma, first. So all we do is we just split on the comma. So I'm going to put a comma in there and I'm going to hit OK. Now you see that the first name and last name split up. So that couldn't, couldn't hardly get any easier. Uh, I'm going to drag the last name over where it should be. And we need the bib number, which looks like it's going to be race or race number. Uh, participant's last name, first name. Now we need gender somewhere. Um, let me get rid of some of these columns. I know we don't need date registered, time registered. Uh, category, we need that. We don't care about status. Confirmation number, we don't need. Age group, we don't need. We don't care how they registered payment. We don't need this. Like I said, this is not modifying your Excel file that's that we that we use to to grab these values. Um, we're just getting rid of these extra columns so we our importer be smoother. Okay, so let me see if we find. Okay, so it looks like here's gender. Yeah, gender. Top. That's gonna be the runner walker. Date of birth. Uh, is this date of birth? Okay, race birthday. Age. I uh, don't know if we have age. Is this age? Okay, yeah, age on race day. Okay. Street address, city, state, 
zip. We don't care about country. We don't care about... Okay, so it looks like that they've got the name in there twice and we didn't have to split, but uh, that's alright that you want to see that. I want to show you that feature anyway, so I'm going to remove these columns to just duplicate for the name. And looks like they got email in there twice so also, so now we do want t shirt size. So we'll, uh, I think that's all the columns in order bid number, participants, last name, first name, the type, uh, sorry, the gender, the type, the race, birth date, age. Address, city, state, zip, email, phone, and T-shirt. So the last thing we got to do is uh, on this one, you'll see that they are not formatted in the way I expect. Like for example, S for small, M for medium. So we're going to change those real fast. We're going to click on Change Column Data. That'll show you all the values that are currently in the in the in the row or in the column. So what we're going to do is we're going to say Adult 2x is 2xl. We're going to say U small is small. And we're just going to go through real fast and do all these. Youth medium is going to be small. Adult large is going to be large. Youth large will say small. Adult medium is going to be medium. We'll pick select size. It's just like someone typed in select size. Yes, yeah, we'll just set that, that that. Adult small is going to be small. And is that all of them? No, we've got a none and adult XL. We'll say none is medium and adult XL is going to be XL. Okay. So that is all the. Uh, T-shirt size. We you'll see up here. These uh, these are the three columns that we have to check: the gender, type, and T-shirt size. So let's go ahead and do gender. Okay, so that one's already good. M or F, and then type. It's going to be 5K run. It's going to be R, and 5K walk is going to be W. Okay, so, and like I said, just out of habit, I'm going to go and sort it, the values ascending. Um, so this is uh, all the columns in the right order. This is everything formatted the way it should be. So we are ready to import, and you'll see that it's ticking right along. So it imported 481 participants, and here's all those participants we just imported. So... That's a fairly, you know, as easy as it gets, I think, when it comes to being able to import any Excel file, no matter what format it's in. Um, the only other thing you may run into is with some Excel files, it's like Microsoft doesn't recognize that it's really an Excel file. This is the file we exported earlier. Usually when we export from the program, it will uh, it'll save it as XLS, but if you try to open it, it'll give you this message right here. If the file is not recognized and you need to you know open it up in Excel and resave it for it to get kind of stamped as an Excel file. So uh, what we do on that is let me go ahead and close this out and we will uh, open it with Excel. And then all we do is we just save as and you see it's for some reason thinks it was tab delimited. All we do is we say you can either pick XLS or the newer XLSX uh, here at the top. We'll just go and do XLS for now. And we'll call this again test. I can't hit my E. There we go. And then we'll place it, sure. So now that we've like stamped it as an Excel file, um, we can actually pull back up our race. And now we can actually pull it in. So uh, that's pretty much everything that I can think about that you'd need to know with the Excel um, import. Uh, the the great thing is uh, if you're using uh, the online registration built into the program, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just hit the sync button. It'll automatically pull in anyone who uh, registered on online. And it will also 
I, I haven't submitted this race online, but if I did, if I hit the sync button after manually enter, entering or importing from Excel, it'll upload every one of these participants up to the website so you can see uh, see their name on, on the participant list. So uh, pretty cool feature. The uh, I guess that's the that's a gist of what I wanted to show you on the Excel import. Uh, we're going to create some other videos showing you how to use other features like the RFID stuff. Uh, but that's that's the Excel import. I hope you found it useful and uh, you know that you can use it many times over. So uh, that'll conclude this video.